Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through and reviewing Endeavor OS. We'll first explore its contents and everything it has to offer with its default desktop environment and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. I've started going through things here and my first impressions are that uh, it has the look and feel somewhat of uh, Windows since it uses the XFCE desktop environment and uh, the desktop is very minimal and not cluttered. The background wallpaper is of a cool tone and very easy on the eyes. And as you uh, load into Endeavor, you get this Endeavor OS greeter. Uh, it just kind of familiarizes you with Endeavor if you want. You can visit their website, the wiki, their forum, get uh, news and even donate to them. Uh, it's got some install options as well as after the install as well as some after install things that you can do, or if you want to add more applications, uh, popular ones are here, such as a firewall or the uh, Chrome web browser, Chromium, uh, and uh, LibreOffice if you want a nice office suite to use. Makes it very easy on beginner users to come in here and go through these items and uh, figure out how to um, make better use of Endeavor OS. We'll go ahead and exit out of this greeter. First thing I'm gonna check out and see how to change their default wallpaper here. Maybe we can get into the uh, desktop settings. Maybe this is where it's located. And yes, it is. So fairly intuitive. You can see that they have uh, multiple wallpapers here for the background. Uh, let's choose a nice nature scene here. This is kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and select that just to kind of change it up a little bit. Um, it also gives you some options on the, the menus and icons and what uh, icon size you want. Let's say you want a bigger icon size, you can change it in here. Let's exit out and uh, we'll go ahead and actually put an icon in the background. What I'll do is I'll launch a terminal and you have a shortcuts menu here with terminal in it. And I'm just going to create a uh, file on the desktop so you can kind of see what that looks like. I'll um, just go ahead and use VI. And uh, we'll call it file. And in here, I'm just going to put it, say file. Escape out of here, quit. And as you can tell, on some desktops, you don't really get file icons on the back desktop, but with this one, you do. And you can also select to drag and drop it all around the back desktop, background of the desktop. And uh, you also, if you highlight it, it gives you a little overview of uh, what the file is. It says it's a plain text document with uh, 12 bytes and it was last modified today. And exit out of terminal for now. Go ahead and take a moment to like the video if you're in this far, it really does help me out. Um, Endeavor also, uh, since it uses this XFCE uh, desktop environment, you can see it's similar to uh, Windows. So uh, similar kind of, uh, you can place your files here in the background and uh, it has a couple shortcuts uh, in a taskbar as well as on the right hand side, you have things uh, again, sort of like a taskbar where you can view your clock. Uh, edit notifications if you want to be disturbed or not. <laughs> and then you have uh, what your current charge is. If you want to adjust your volume settings for a microphone or the sound output volume. This is just uh, the updates that are currently available if you want to look at that. It has a little Arch Linux symbol here. Uh, network settings what's currently connected. And then you have uh, four different uh, workspaces that you can select from. You can see me going through them right now if you wanna switch them. We're currently on uh, workspace one, so you have four different ones you can work with. And we were talking about these uh, shortcuts. One's for the system monitor, one is for the terminal, another one is for the file browser manager, and the default uh, web browser. Let's go ahead and start the uh, file manager or file browser. It looks very similar to something that you'd see in Windows. You have uh, the desktop trash, aka the recycle bin, and then uh, the home user right here where that user has its desktop documents downloads. So if you have multiple users, you'll have multiple homes 
in which each user has their own set of desktop documents, downloads. And I also installed Eclipse earlier, so you can see that the Eclipse workspace exists within here too. One thing that I really found great about Endeavor OS is their package manager is Pac-Man, and it is very easy to set up uh, packages uh, using Pac-Man, and I really do enjoy using it. It's one of the best package managers I've used so far. And Endeavor OS is uh, really nice for a user who wants the Arch Linux based experience since it's based off of Arch Linux, but uh, they don't want to take the time to deal with all the setup of Arch Linux. If you choose to install Arch Linux, you'll have to go through everything yourself, including installing a base system, a bootloader, or a desktop environment, any packages that you might want to use or include. So things like browsers, media players, all, all the little things that come well standard with Endeavor OS. So that's where Endeavor OS shines. You don't have to install any of those things because it comes pre-installed with the system and it's Arch Linux based. So it's uh, very well developed and on the cutting edge of packages. With all that being said, it makes it uh, a great operating system for beginner users who don't want to dive into manually building an operating system around their needs and only want to use the very basic everyday packages and they don't necessarily care about having the operating system tailored to their specific needs. So we'll explore some more here. If we hit the Endeavor OS button down here on the left, sort of, sort of like the start menu, we'll get uh, a list of categories as well as who's currently logged in, Savvy Nick here. You can also uh, extend the start menu. Uh, if you go back down to Endeavor OS and hit it, it does save this for you. It's kind of neat. You can just uh, change it to be as big or as small as you want so it's out of the way. Uh, then if we look through, let's expand this and look through what we have in our categories here. So all the subcategories are on the left hand side. Recently used things, favorites that you might have. They already include some favorites for you here, which is kind of funny. But um, you can also hit all so you can get all the programs. As you can see, it comes with quite a few programs here. And then uh, it has categories such as uh, accessories, development. Uh, so you can see I installed the clips earlier. And then uh, graphics. The internet, so we have Firefox again as our default web browser, multimedia, so you can go ahead and play your media, uh, and office experience, so it doesn't really have an office suite built onto it. Uh, you did see in the greeter where you can go ahead and download LibreOffice uh, suite, and then in settings, uh, you have your various settings uh, that you might want to change, color profiles, the desktop, so like we did before, change the background. You have your display settings. So in display settings, you can change uh, your monitor that you're currently using and what the resolution is in here. Uh, back to Endeavor OS down here. Uh, so you also have your system settings as well. So if we look through here, uh, these are just really utilities that you can use that come with the system. Um, things such as uh, Gparted, so you can create uh, new partitions or delete partitions from a specific disk that you have in the computer or using the terminal, the file manager, task manager, and other various things here. So even though Endeavor OS comes with a lot of different uh, programs pre-installed, you can of course make changes and updates to those packages or programs as well as an install them if you don't want them. But again, it gives you a really good uh, starting point instead of using Arch Linux. You can simply use uh, Endeavor OS and get you started a lot quicker instead of having to install everything yourself. If you look in the bottom right, you can go ahead and uh, switch users, suspend a computer. Forewarning, some people have problems with suspend uh, where their laptops don't necessarily wake up after powering them back up from a suspend, may, forcing you to restart the operating system. Also shut down, restart, and log out the normal options that you would su suspect. Also at the top it tells you who's currently logged in. We'll cancel out of that. And then if you right click, you do get uh, shortcut options here. Um, so you can actually look through various applications and you get your subcategories again. It's much like the start menu, which is really nice because you can go ahead and activate this from anywhere by just right clicking. Uh, you can open a new window and you can also create a launcher to launch various commands or, 
or uh, programs, create a, basically a bookmark or a shortcut, create a folder, create a new document, open the terminal from here. So you can be in various places and open terminal. So let's say I'm in uh, uh, this file manager. I can also open a terminal in here. Uh, other things you can do is zoom in and out. It does uh, zoom in quite a bit so you can see your icons or text uh, a lot better if you need that. And you can always default it back to the normal size if necessary. Uh, other options in the file manager up here you have uh, multiple tabs if you want to create them. This is very nice because you can be browsing multiple tabs instead of having multiple windows. You also have the option of detaching a tab if you want, closing all the windows or closing a specific tab, as well as selecting uh, all files. And uh, you can even configure custom actions as you see down here, or added the preferences for the file manager. Uh, view allows you to reload and toggle certain parts of the file manager on or off if you want, zoom in and out as we saw before. And then uh, go is just kind of a shortcut for you. Where, where do you want to go with the file manager? or open a specific location up at the bottom. Help, of course, is uh, just to get some help with the file manager and other various programs or packages. So I'm going to exit out of the file manager and I'm gonna start up a terminal through the shortcut down here. Let's just look at the terminal a little bit here. Uh, what we have is the user and the host name here. It's in white. You can see it has a, sort of a transparent background by default. I don't know if I like that or not. It lets you see through the terminal. As you're typing in commands, they are as well white. Uh, it's a nice, great background, and it allows the user to easily see what they're typing in because of the white text on the gray background. Um, let's go ahead and just log in as a super user here. And when you do log in as a super user, you can go ahead and see you're now root, so it's in a red. Uh, basically warning you that uh, you have super privileges at this point. Um, you can toggle the full screen mode and you have a few more options here. Search uh, the terminal or paste into the terminal copy from as well as create a new terminal tab so you can have multiple tabs as well as a new terminal. You can also minimize the terminal here which is kind of funny and maximize it in this sense. You have another minimize option as well so it'll Go ahead and get minimized to the bottom here. And then, of course, uh, maximize or minimize using full screen or not. Let's go ahead and exit out. And uh, the warning that you get by default is that you're closing a terminal and that you might have multiple terminals open. You can set this to not ask you again and close the window. That way, next time, it doesn't bother you. One other thing I wanted to check out real quick is uh, let's see what the processes currently look like and uh, how HTOP looks. Uh, HTOP gives you a little bit of information here at the top like uh, CPU usage as well as uh, what, how much memory is being used up and if swap space is being used. Um, you can see how many tasks and threads are running as well as a load average and how long we've uh, had this current session running up here for the uptime. You can see 31 minutes here. Also you have um, the current processes running as well as their I process IDs, uh, a little bit of a description of where they're uh, located or started from, the uh, name of the program. It all just depends on how the program's set up. And then uh, the priority rating on the uh, program as well as how much uh, virtual memory there it's using, what the CPU consumption is, as well as the uh, memory consumption. As you can see, there's quite a bit of processes running here for this uh, system. It's fairly neat. Again, I, I don't necessarily like the transparent background here. I'm sure you can change that. It's a little hard to see some things like this gray here. Uh, gray on gray is not the greatest anyway, so that might be just because of HTOP and how it displays uh, stuff, but I would I would like a darker background where it's not transparent in order to really be able to see things. You also have some options on HTOP at the bottom if you want to go ahead and quit out of the program, kill a specific process, uh, change the priority of a process, 
find a tree, filter things out. Um, it's very useful, very useful tool for many Linux distributions. So at this point, I'd like to give uh, Endeavor OS some uh, ratings here. So Endeavor uh, OS isn't extremely popular, but is climbing in the ranks and offers a lot to its users who don't want to install Arch Linux themselves. And you can lend from the Arch Linux communities documentation, which is extensive and uh, will help you through any issues that you may have. So I'll give it a popularity rating of five out of 10. It's simple to use especially for users who don't want to go through the Arch Linux install process. There's also similarity between uh, the Windows layout and the default XFCE desktop environment here. So this will help users coming over from Windows and keeping the learning curve to a minimum. They'll kind of have the same placement of uh, things like they do in Windows. So I'll go ahead and give it a user friendliness rating of seven out of 10. Endeavor OS is uh, a rolling release uh, Arch Linux based distribution, so it's keeping up with the cutting edge of development from Arch Linux and allows you to optimize uh, your performance if you choose to do so. Everything seems quite responsive and I really enjoy their package manager called Pac-Man. I'll give it a performance rating of 7 out of 10. And since Endeavor OS is based off of Arch Linux and comes with all sorts of useful packages that Arch Linux doesn't since you have to build uh, that system yourself, you can easily install more features with Pac-Man. And again, it's on the cutting edge since it's a rolling release model, giving it a features rating of a nine out of 10. Finally, since it's based off of Arch Linux, it can lend the Arch Linux community for support with issues, although they tend to be a little more on the technical side. So if you're a beginner user, you might have issues understanding some documentation because it may lack steps. This gives it a sustainability rating of six out of 10, giving Endeavor OS an overall score of 34 out of 50. Well, I hope you enjoyed the review and walkthrough of Endeavor OS. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.